Yo, what is up guys? How's it going? This is Kazi from Clever Programmer. Today I want to do something a lot of fun and special and I think it's going to be really cool. I'm glad that you're here today and I'm going to be doing a CSS battle against myself. Plus I'm just testing out the live streaming setup and uh, you know, of course, I just want to hang out with you guys too. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So super random, felt like I should do it. So uh, here I am and uh, let's just do this. Okay, so let's go here. How can I, how can I get this out of my way so I can actually just code? Beautiful, hi guys, hi, 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 welcome. Beautiful to have you here. Where's my setup? Hey, how's it going? This is so cool. Hey there, Dark Code Lab. What's up? Hey, Roshan. Hi, Satish. Welcome. You guys are able to hear me clearly, right? Shozeeb says, hello, brother from Bangladesh. Welcome. Nice to have you here, my man. Uh, let me see if I can make the chat a little bit cooler. Yo, Francisco, what is up, bro? Let's play around with the chat. Let me see if I can make the chat a little bit better for you guys. I can't close this like ecam trash. It's really annoying. It's like just takes over my entire screen actually. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, guys, I'm sorry. Give me a second. I'm having lots of uh, technical issues. Okay, you guys can hear me loud and clear. That's a really good sign. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, okay. You guys can see the chat clearly, right? Let me see. Dun, dun. Let me see if I can fix the chat, make it maybe a little bit cooler. I'm just playing around with it. Yeah, I'm live right now, actually. Will it change it? Let's see. Yeah. Ah, there you go. I really appreciate the effort. Hi, hi from Philippines. Amazing. That is really cool. Boxed Twitch. What does that look like? Just clean. Let's see what Twitch one looks like. Sorry guys, give me a second. Ooh, we got a new follower, nice. Welcome. Okay, with that said, I think what I'm gonna do is let's actually go on here and start coding this thing up. So let me get my Ecamm back now. Ecamm, come here. Okay. Maybe like this. Welcome, Ed Beba. Sparse says namaste. Welcome, 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 everybody. Because of you, I learn very fast. Awesome. Good morning, guys. Thank you for the kind words. Um, all right, guys. So I'm going to need your help with coming up with what battle to do. Uh, can I have comments? I'll bring my comments here with me. Okay, so I'm gonna go pick up and figure out which battle to do. So let's see what you guys are saying. Let's see, which one should I pick? There's a circle one, this looks like fun. Um, I kind of suck at CSS, so I'm just going to pick like a random battle here to do. Let's start with this one, actually. That one looks not too crazy. So let's start with that. Hey, Dark Code Lab says we played chess yesterday. Yes, we did. Nice. Back from the Future says your content is like watching Netflix, always engaging. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. Coding Mastery. Um, I'll tell you guys my font when I'm actually coding in Visual Studio Code because I don't even know, honestly, the top of my head like that. Um, like I have no idea what I'm using. 
Okay. Let me zoom in my screen for you guys here. Okay, so that should be nice and zoomed in for you guys. And then I'll bring my face down here so it doesn't really get in the way of anything. But yeah, thank you guys for subscribing. That's awesome. Hershey says, dude, you are just awesome. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. This is really, this is good vibes. I hope you guys can hear the music and you guys are enjoying. And uh, let's just go and figure this uh, battle out now. So I'm going to... I'm going to figure this out with you guys, okay? So let's go. All right. So we're supposed to make this thing over here on the right-hand side. And we're currently on the left-hand side here. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's grab the background and give it that color. All right. So that's pretty good. <laughs> okay. We made decent progress so far. So we got the background color. Now we're gonna make our square that same color as that yellow. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we got that. I think my strategy is gonna be to bring this down here and then give it maybe some border radius. And I hope that does kind of what I'm looking for actually. I'll give it a class name of yellow. I think that should be good. Ooh, how about banana? All right, let's give it a class name of banana. Uh, and then let's see if I can actually grab banana. Hey, that works. That's nice. Harshit, Shohartha says, your videos helped me learn so much. React, hey, that's amazing. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear I could help. That's awesome. That's really cool. Okay. Sayid says, proper beard you got now? Absolutely. Ahmad says, please live stream on how to make and accept payments of cryptocurrencies one day for sure. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. So now let's actually move this square. And can I do margin left 2 EM? Yep, that works. 4 EM, 5, 6, something like that. Okay. And then let's bring it down. Margin top. Ooh, it's 2 down. 5 EM maybe. Okay. Now maybe let's make this square like a lot bigger. Uh... Maybe the width is too big. I think that should be good. Okay. And now let's maybe play with some border radius. Uh, will that work? Okay. So if I give it a lot of border radius, Okay, so I can give it some border radius from the top. And is there a border radius I can give it from the bottom too? Nope. Here. Nope, that's not doing what I want it to do. Is that doing what I want it to do? Whoa! That kind of worked. Now maybe let's make the width 100. Yo, I can't believe it. That is sick. That is fucking sick. I love it. I'm like, this gives me an incentive to actually learn CSS with you guys. So it's definitely good vibes. Raj, <laughs> nice. Um, okay. So that worked. So now I'll do the same thing with the other one. Uh, and I think the other one is more like a peach. So we'll call it peach class. I'll do the same thing here. And we'll do peach. And I wonder if I can just give it a negative 4 EM and negative 3. Interesting. Really thought that would work. Why is it at the bottom?
Maybe I can position absolute this. That is not helping. Let's change the color. Oh, it's mixed with the background. That's not the color, it's this color. Okay, I see it at the bottom. Let's go margin zero. Okay. Maybe position absolute this as well. Okay. Do I still need to position absolute this? Sure. Okay, that kind of works. Let's go negative 4 EM. Nah, margin right. What happens if I comment this out? Okay, that's fine. 15. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's move it down a little bit, nice. And now I gotta flip it the other way. How, oh, the border radius just needs to be flipped. Can I do negative seven and negative seven? No. <laughs> Sometimes me just playing, I just play around with this guys until something works or something makes sense. Oh, snap son. Yo, I think we got it. Let's go. Jefferson Esteva says transform translate. Jefferson, that might actually help. Anybody that's good at CSS, that'd be really cool if you're good at it. Um, deep text me. I would like to actually work with you, even learn CSS, because I want to get better at it, honestly. And maybe you can, I mean, if you want, you can even come on the channel. But if you don't want to come on the channel, you could still like, just teach me. So if you want, just text me. Um, I'll say the number. You guys could drop it in chat. But it's 1224-651-8817. And just text me like uh, hashtag Kazi CSS. Okay. And if I see you text me hashtag Kazi CSS, that means you have some CSS skills. And I, I, it would be cool to work with you on it. Can I, can you make a, Cosbion says, hey, I've been looking for object recognition using Python. Can you make a video for that? Okay. Do you guys think I this should be like a CSS match? I mean, it's a pretty close match. Let's just submit and let's see what we get actually. Can I submit here? Submit. Yo, let's go, 95% match. Give it up, you guys. If you guys thought that was sick, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so I can give you a shout out. Object-oriented programming. Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome. I'll give you a shout out and uh, yeah, I got some new features now, which is super dope. Awesome. Let's see if YouTube is actually showing this live stream. Oh shit. Yeah, it is showing this live stream. Send me live? Yeah, I'm live. Oh shit, let's go. <laughs> All right. Dope. That's sick. So I just made this with a 95% match. Whoa. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, Shryan, for all subscribing. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Um, let me go turn my music back on. Wait, the music is on. Why can't I hear it? Huh. Hey, what happened to my music? I chill vibes going and then these guys came in and... Fucking ruined it. Oh, you guys also bounced off this All right. I gave up. Um, awesome. So that looked like that actually worked. That pretty much uh, we completed the challenge that we had. So my score is actually 2211 right now with four targets. You need to at least you need a you need at least a score of 10,000 to see your rank. Oh wow. Okay. So please make a video on full CSS. Yes, I definitely will. CSS positioning is definitely, yeah, that's a challenging thing actually to pick up, guys. 
Congrats in advance for 1 million subscribers. Joyesh, thank you so much. I appreciate you, brother. That's awesome. Okay, let's see if there's any other challenge. It's going to be really good. Otherwise, we can do some object recognition with... Let me try to unplug this. Okay. All right, I'm going to relocate, guys, because my roommates are very inconsiderate and very, very loud. So we're going to relocate. Okay. All right. I'm surprised the internet is working. Okay, that's pretty freaking good. What are you guys saying? Kashyap says, bro, I have been looking for... Wait, I didn't mean to ban you. I'm sorry. Fuck. Kashyap says, bro, I've been looking for object recognition using Python for months, but I did not get any results. Can you make a video for that, please? Yeah, I'm sure that we can actually talk about that too. Welcome. We have 182 people live. That's amazing. Vasim says, your clones are amazing. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, I think something with object recognition could be a lot of fun. I could show you guys probably with JavaScript or Python. I think either would be really, really cool. Actually, let's take a look. JavaScript object recognition. I haven't done a lot of uh, recognition stuff, but that could be really cool. Let's look it up. We got TensorFlow here. Okay, detecting objects. Okay, model image. Does somebody have some sample code, maybe like a GitHub repo? And we could pull it from there. Link to the full code, interesting. Okay. So, let's see. Allow them to use my camera. Okay, sick. Um, oh shit, it's detecting the person. What the fuck? Yo, hey, it's detecting a bed? I'm on a couch. What? Whoa! That is crazy. It's already working. What the heck? Okay, let's see if it detects the TV. Okay, does it detect the TV? Okay, do I have to punt it? Oh my god! It's already working! Yo, problem solved. You guys gave me a challenge. We already did that challenge. What are you fucking, what are you doing? That is fucking sick. Image detection with JavaScript, bro. Look oh, at that. Dang. We got two persons. Oh, that TensorFlow, right? TensorFlow. Yeah, look. We got... Uh, Hello? Yeah, it detects everything. It detected a TV. It was crazy. It said uh -huh. TV. It was nuts. Yeah, this is freaking. One of the people said, "Hey, they wanted to use a. Uh, they wanted to learn object-oriented programming. So classes. We did some stuff. Yeah, this is freaking crazy, guys. Okay, let's take a look at the code, and let's see what's happening. So let's let's see what is happening. So they're actually. It looks like they're using React. To do this, which is pretty freaking cool. Uh, they're using object-oriented programming, so we have component did mount. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if navigator, I'm gonna move this to the right-hand side here, so I can see the code and understand it. All right. So navigator.media devices. I'm assuming that's something that comes built in with. Where is Navigator coming from? Is this a JavaScript thing or is this a Navigator dot Navigator dot media devices? Oh, I think that actually might just be a JavaScript thing. Yeah. I think that's a JavaScript thing, you guys. It's a JavaScript. That's pretty cool. And what does it actually do? Let's look at Mozilla Firefox. It says it gets 
fired when a media input or output device is attached or removed from the user's computer. Nice. Okay. That's cool. Luke is writing us a message. What's up, Luke? How's it going, brother? Luke says that's lit. Yeah, it is pretty freaking crazy. And it's working. That's the crazy thing. Okay. Um, so if media devices exist, then do the following thing. Okay, this that's what that N and chaining means. So if they exist, then go ahead and um, get the user media. Okay. And I'm assuming that's the video that we're getting right now. And webcam promise is going to be navigator media dot get user media. Okay. Um, and get user media takes an object and we say audio false. We don't need the audio. We just need the video. Okay. Facing mode is user. Okay, cool. So for example, I think if you had a mobile device, it would by default start with facing you as opposed to away from you. Okay, so let's take a look at the documentation for this. User facing, facing mode user, right? Facing mode environment, you see that? To require the rear camera, use uh, environment. So I imagine if you use environment, it would actually face the other way, which is so freaking, which is pretty dope, which is a, I never knew that. That's cool. Okay. And then once we get the promise, okay, make the current window to be the actual stream that we're getting. All right. Okay. So stream is going to be like something we're getting like probably every frame, right? This promise is running, I imagine, and it's getting every single frame. All right. Wow, we're freaking machine learning with JavaScript right now, guys. Are you guys fucking excited or what? This is amazing. I'm pretty excited. Cool, good vibes. Proeska says good vibes. Mathab says, yeah, it is. Do you own Dogecoin? Nice. Okay. And then what happens? We get the metadata. And we resolve the promise. Okay, we resolve it. Model promise, load, promise all. These are the two promises we want them to run. Once they're, this is the cool thing about promise.all, by the way, guys. If you if you don't know this, add promise.all to your uh, to your list of things for you to know or learn. Let me move this here and make this bigger. Okay, so you guys can very very clearly see this. But promise.all is awesome. You give it an array of the other promises. And once both of them are done and resolved, then and only then this fires. So really cool thing that you guys can use whenever you have multiple promises. You can run them all. You can run them all together like that. Okay. So then your code is cleaner and you don't have to write those like really long dot then chains. But dot then dot then dot then. Okay. Use promise.all. I think it's a very ESXy, ESXy way of doing it. I think we just coined a new term. ES sexy. Okay. Oh shit. Wait, this is a comment. Why is it freaking out? Okay, whatever. What happened? What did I mess up? Let's refresh. I broke the app. How did I break the app? Okay. All right, let's try not to break the app. Okay, then let's go through the rest of this code. What is happening? Okay. So you guys can go here to this URL and get access to this code as well. All right. But let's go down. Detect frame. All right, so probably get the first value of the frame value zero all right so what what is let me try one let's go back 
So another thing I like to do is just play around with the code, okay? Break shit, like try different things. This is somebody else's code. I didn't sit there and write it. So the best way to pick it up is just debug it. Like go to random places, try different things. You'll pick it up faster. But reading people's code will also make you good. Like right now we're just looking at somebody's machine learning uh, or TensorFlow object detection algorithm. And we're just here and we're like, okay, let's just play with it. Let's see what we get. Okay, let's see what we can understand. Detect frame, video and model. I think this is where the machine learning is happening. Model that detect video. Once you detect it, then make the predictions. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Once you detect the video, then make the predictions. All right. Render predictions. Request the animation frame frame video model okay and then here are the render predictions okay so this is that function render predictions and let's see what this is render predictions okay so one thing we're doing is we're making this uh rectangle okay and this is the rectangle that's being made around my face right there where it says person okay and that's how we're making it. We're making a rectangle. We're choosing our font to be sans serif. That's how we're seeing the bed and shit, right? Like for example, if I just change this to like 24 PX, you guys are gonna notice that once of course it crashes, let me see if there's a way I can save, hit refresh, and it hopefully loads the new code. So now see the size of bed and person is a lot bigger, right? Cause I changed it and it worked so great now i understand that that's how the fonts are changing about the code okay baseline is at the top so i imagine you could change the text baseline and it'll move it to the bottom or somewhere else cool and then we're looping through the predictions so we have box one and we have box another box prediction box two three okay so what is let's look up prediction B box and let's see what we get in documentations. I'll write a tensor flow. I think it's a tensor flow thing. Bounding box regression. So that's what B box is. Okay. Bounding box. And that's the box you can use to bound and detect like, okay, there's the airplane. Okay. A lot of coding is like, just fucking around with things and playing. Yes, if you're a scientist, maybe certain things can help, but like, unfortunately, I'm not a scientist, okay? So for me, looking at the math or the formulas doesn't really help me that much, but me just playing around with it, breaking the code, having fun, I just learn a lot better like that, right? So let me let me see is there anything else that gives me a better indicator of how to use this so let's go here tutorial just so i can maybe get a little better insight possibly into uh how to use tensorflow in react js that's what i'm looking for okay so cell phone 96 percent sure that it, that's a cell phone okay Machine learning library. So TensorFlow is a library for machine learning in JavaScript, which enables machine learning models to be used directly in the browser. Okay. So freaking powerful, right? Cause we're just using machine learning and unlike Python guys, like we didn't have to install anything, right? We didn't have to download anything. This is so freaking easy. It's just working straight out of the box. I can't see your guys' text or chat messages. I think it'd be kind of cool to see them. So let me see if there is some way I can see them. Um, it's chunky. I think I might have to do box for them to like. Maybe that will make your guys' chat messages pop out a little bit more. Let's see. Okay, so we have object detection going here, right? We have dog and a cat. Okay. Thank you. Somebody said you are awesome. Input image, extract region, 
compute CNN features and then classify regions. Okay, so that's how the algorithm works. Okay, we input our image, it extracts uh, propo uh, region proposals, about 2000 things it extracted, okay? And then it computes the features and then it goes, hey, is it an airplane? Nope, is it a person? Yes, is it a TV monitor? No, okay? Now, what is Coco SSD? Because that's another thing we're using. Common objects, context, single shot, multi-box, blah, blah, blah. English, please. Returns an array of bounding boxes with class names and confidence levels. Now, that's important. So, for example, that's what I'm looking for. That's what B-box is. Okay. So, we get... Um, Okay, so let's say that B box gets us four items, right? Item number one, item number zero or whatever, right? We have B box 10, 5, 559. Five, and each items will have a name like this, like traffic light, or is it something else? And then we have a confidence score. We're 53% sure that that's a, uh, that's a traffic light, okay? So right now, I don't know what percentage sure we are, but there's a high likelihood that that's a person that I'm looking at right now. Okay, I don't like how the text is looking right now. Is there a way I can like add custom CSS to that? Like, can I add background? Uh, can you guys keep chatting? Because I wanna see how the chatting looks and maybe I can add some CSS to it. So just like maybe type something smart. Okay, thank you, you said hello. Okay, great. Let's see if I can like live code up. Um, maybe I can give each uh, log emote image. Okay, meta badge name. Thank you for such nice words, by the way, guys. It's, that means a lot. Okay, so we it does have a background color. But, like, how come I don't really see the background color? Okay, I'm just going to do something crappy, and I'm just going to write black and, and, and hit save. And let's see what happens. If you guys chat, do I get some type of background color behind this now? If I don't, I'm just going to move it back. I'm just going to move it back to the way it was. because I don't want to break anything. Okay, let's go back. All right. So, that was really useful to actually understand. Uh, let's go back. Right here. That was useful to understand. All right. X, Y, width, and height. Okay. Draw the bounding box. And then we draw the bounding box. X, Y, width, and height. Okay. So, um, this box, I think, is telling us, like, the coordinates to make the box. Okay. So, I think each of these are a coordinate. That allows us to get the box. Text width, text height. That's the text that you guys are seeing above my head probably. All right, and then we draw it out. Cool. So look at that. How insane is that? We just give the machine learning. Once we detect the face and the image and the video frames, we send it over to our machine learning algorithm. Guys, there's more code here to draw the freaking box around my face then we even need to make the machine learning actually happen. Isn't that nuts? <laughs> like the machine learning part actually is so freaking small and short in this. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean, literally, I think that's the only thing. Index.js, we install two libraries here. We have, we have just a couple of dependencies. Let's see what our dependencies are. React Magic Drop Zone. We have... Uh, TensorFlow and then TensorFlow models, Coco, whatever. So we have just a couple of important dependencies. Outside of that, the code is 100 lines. 
and majority of the code is freaking drawing the box around my stupid face. Okay? So that to me is pretty freaking cool. Really, really cool. Let me see if I can actually sign in, save this, sign in with GitHub. Because I don't want to lose this. This is actually really, really cool. Um, let's uh, fork this. All right. Did I fork it? Fork. Right. I should have forked it. And what's really cool about all of this, right? Let me guys show you guys something. You guys can actually go to this freaking app right now. That's the most insane thing about this. So like, do you guys want to try this? I just deployed this freaking app. You guys can use this. Let me check it out. Hmm. Okay. Let me go and, uh, Hand it to you guys right now. Oh, my life keeps dying. Maybe I should not be live streaming in 4K. So check that out, you guys. Thank you, brother. You are really awesome too. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So I just sent you guys the deployed app. Let me know um, if you guys got it and check it out. Kazi, will you bring a series of desktop application with JavaScript? Yeah. I mean, I think I was talking with one of my developers about this. We might actually do that. Um, we might bring electron. Thank you, Timur book. Appreciate you. Okay. So yeah, that was really cool. Thank you for suggesting the machine learning algorithm thing. I had a lot of fun. So we did a CSS challenge and then we launched an app that can detect, um, right. We launched an app that can detect our faces and who we are. Like that's so freaking cool. Like this is crazy, it's already working. Damn. Wow. That's cool. Now we can even make some stupid changes to this app. Where are we getting the video that's cool I literally fell in love with JavaScript that's amazing that's sick I look says my comments are not showing up but I can see them I can see them that's cool he made a ref to video ref and canvas ref and then this canvas is just actually referring Okay, and where are we updating it? So let's go video ref. Wow, this is uh, video current dot source object. The actual string. That's dope. I love reading code, man. I have a lot of fun reading code because you can take so many projects and build on top of them and you don't have to start things from scratch. I'm really against having to sit there and think like you don't, you should try to avoid doing that and save it for the really hard problems or you truly have to think. But a lot of times like get really good at, um, get really good at like understanding how to solve, um, or how to be really resourceful. That's going to help out a lot. This is dope. By the way, were any of are any of you guys able to use this so far? The app, the deployed version of it. 
Oh, socket not working on a public address. I think you guys should be able to use it. So deep, they're kind of like, um, they're a little bit like using use state refs. But like look up refs versus uh, use state. That's going to help you. Thanks, brother. AK says, uh, that was crazy. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. I mean, I was really excited about it. I don't know if it was as exciting for you guys, but to me, that was actually pretty exciting. I had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, please, guys, don't spam, because otherwise I'm going to have to ban you. Sorry, you're going to get banned, buddy. Um... How to connect Python images processing in React JS? Um, I mean, I feel like you can just do it with React, right? So then you don't really have to use Python there that much, and you should be good to go. Okay, this is the article, and now if I want to read it, it actually explains what's happening. So I'm actually curious, and I will go through it right now because we made the app. Now, let's actually read how it's working. Ooh, 83,000 reads. Nice. Oh. So, a machine learning model can tell us what's in an image. but it doesn't mean it can tell us where it is in the image. Okay, so for example, a machine learning algorithm can tell us, hey, this is, um, this is Kazi versus, say this is Gary V, right? Like it can distinguish between two different human beings or a human being versus an animal. But object detection can detect where that thing is in the image, okay? Okay. Detecting objects. All we need to is import. Okay. So Coco SSD helps us detect objects. It's really good. So it's we're importing the TensorFlow model. Yo, that's easy as fuck. Look at that. Image, get element by image, by ID, that ID. And then load and just detect the image. Is it that easy? Can I actually like... Can I create a div right now? Put an image in it and it can detect what it is? Um, super curious. Let's try it out. Where should I go to try it out? Let's go stack blitz. I really like stack blitz. Stack blitz. Okay. Let's go... Do I want to go, um, yeah, let's just go react. Okay. I'm going to sign in. Let's play around with it and let's see if it's actually that easy. Cause if it is, that would really, really cool. That looks like vanilla JavaScript too, to me. So that's really awesome. Okay, so let's put this import statement at the top. Let's install that package. Let's install the missing dependencies as well. Okay, everything is installed now. Uh, okay, get element by image. So, okay, and uh, let's, uh, Okay, let's have an image and uh, I'll go to Imgur and get one of my images. So let's grab a, 
Let's grab this image right here. Put that right there. Did I not close the tag? Okay. So my face is now there. And uh, let's give it an ID of image. So I wonder if that's enough for it to work. No backend found in registry. Get element by ID. Let me see if I can put this image in actually. Back and found in registry. Let's look at this error with TensorFlow. And let's see what people are saying. Okay, what were the dependencies that we had in this project? Let's add those dependencies as well. So, what were the dependencies I had here? Do I have Coco SSD as a dependency right now in this project? I mean, I'm signed in. Why does it keep saying sign in or you'll lose progress? Wait, what just happened? Okay. Um, okay, dependencies. I have Coco SSD. I have this. What else is different from uh, right there? Okay, I have Coco and I have TFJS. We have tfjs i think maybe just regular tfjs as well tensor flow get the same one Okay, let's try it again. We we'll still get, keep getting that same. Uh, still keep getting that same error, actually. All right, let's just console log uh, something else as well. Let's go console log hello. All right, so that hello comes through, but this does not. That does not come through. Oh, wait, hold on. Is it because I didn't give it a hashtag? Okay, I'll keep reading this for now and we might go back. But that's all that looks like they're doing. Okay, get element by ID image. Let's check. Let's check that image real quick.
can take several seconds. So yeah, I don't think I need to put the hashtag there, right? Let's hit X. Don't really need that. After we get our prediction away, let me try it in just vanilla, vanilla JavaScript and let's go from there actually. So let's take Let's get out of here and let's try in vanilla JavaScript. Okay. So there we go. Let's take this and add it right there. Let's install the package. Let's install the missing dependencies and uh, Instead of JS starter, let's actually make this an image tag. Uh, we'll go image. It's gonna be a self closing tag. And we will go source is, uh, let's give it the image URL. Let's give it an ID of image. So now, all right, so now we're getting the, I'm getting the image. Yes, I'm getting access to the image element, so that's really, really good. But I have no idea why my Coco SSD is not doing what it's supposed to do. Because I'm clearly getting access to the image. It's right there. And it's right here. Attributes, right? Like for example, I can do dot attributes dot id image dot attributes dot source attributes dot source but now I want to know why am I not getting let's see if you guys have any clues in chat looking at chat now maybe try a different image print says but it's like it's not even telling me if there's an error or not you know Pull the kill switch, Manish says. Um, Alok says, const run Coco async. Wait, hold on. Is that it? It's hard for me to actually copy your comment. Run Coco. Okay, so make a function. It's an async function. Wait. Yeah, this is um. This is odd. Let's go. Let's go take a look at this version. I mean, I want to just be able to do like a really simple version, you know, like I thought that they would have a simple way of doing this because I think the error that I'm still going to get when I look at it because I have my face in there. 
maybe let's just give it a width uh, of 400 like this and let's also give it a height of something like that give it a smaller height So when I hit inspect, let's see what it's saying. Same thing. There's an error that is happening in the promise. Okay. So let's go through what their explanation is of the code. So we, after we get our prediction, we need a way to display it on the screen. Our prediction response will be a list of bounding boxes. Ah, B box is a bounding box. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Understood. So we have our X and Y coordinate. We got width and height. Okay, that makes sense. And the confidence scores. Class is cat and score is that. Okay, that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Okay. Then the canvas element actually allows us to get this. Let me just look up Coco JavaScript load image. Load image from URL, because that's what we're doing. What the fuck? the hell I mean is it me or does that look like way more complicated than it needs to be Coco's load image from URL bro there's got to be an easier way why is this so fucking complicated what why Wow. Um, okay. How about just like a regular image? Asset loading. Jeez. Jeez Louise. I was wondering how I can load sprites from external URL, such as friends. Okay. So not only are we gonna not be able to pull the image, so, so not only is the image gonna be kind of um, complicated to pull, but what makes it um, harder is uh, you're also going to have to worry with cores. You're going to have to get past cores. And to get past cores, oftentimes you need a server side um, that can actually bypass cores. So cores is kind of annoying to deal with. Okay, you can try it like this. So that will give you the image. It cannot work on JavaScript binding. This way only works on Coco to the HTML5. Jeez. Wow. If any of you in the chat get a boiler boilerplate code running, like meaning super freaking simple, like what literally the first part of it like this that would be really cool because then i can copy um we can take a look at what you did and it might help everybody because otherwise it's like there's a lot of boilerplate and then also having to get uh, past cores requests it's just like really annoying and tedious and like i don't want to sit here 
and write a Firebase like cloud function just to get past cores. You know, I want to be able to actually like, you know, just pick up this. But I think even when we were going through the code earlier, right? Pause the video, get element by video. When we were going through the code earlier, we were making sense of a lot of the things. For example, like the get media, facing mode, user. The other one is environment. So there are a lot of things that we picked up. And then let's see what happens next. Okay, streaming from the webcam. To run real-time detection on a webcam stream is almost as easy as changing from an image tag to a video tag. With the simple exception of this giant blob of code to start up the webcam. Okay. So this is going to be needed to start up the webcam. Got it. We can then just pass our video element to our model for detection. However, this time we're going to call request animation frame, which will call our detection function over and over in an infinite loop as fast as it can, skipping frames when it can't keep up. Oh, that's dope. Ah, nice. So we pass it the video element. Then we start making our predictions. Okay. Oh, it's an infinite loop. Look at that. Call the function detect frame. Woo, recursion, baby. Let's go. So this function is going to be in an infinite loop running forever. And it just keeps pulling the video. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Because to stream video, you need to be in infinite loop. Holy shit, it's crazy. We're in an infinite loop right now. You just watching this video, you're in an infinite loop. You're stuck forever. You're stuck here with me. Wow. Having a lot of, they have made it extremely easy to play with machine learning with minimal headache, but it only took me hours. It's beautiful. Which screen marker do you use? I use screen brush. That's awesome. Yeah. I think adding my own models would be cool to this too. It'd be a lot of fun. So that was awesome. All right. That was really, really fun. I think I picked up something. I hope you guys had fun. We did some CSS stuff, and then we also picked up some machine learning, TensorFlow, real-time object detection with JavaScript. That was cool. I had a ton of fun. Um, I hope you guys had a ton of fun. Hopefully, you guys picked up something. Thank you, Mike Brownlee, for subscribing. Really appreciate you. It's amazing. Love seeing you guys. Um, Subscribing to the channel makes me really, really happy. Sadeep, <laughs> Suleiman, let's go. Suleiman, subscribe to the channel. Appreciate that. Sadeep says Kazi's new course, Machine Learning with JavaScript. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun, actually. I might go down that rabbit hole and launch a course. That'd be really cool. Himel just sub subscribed. Amazing. I like these battles. Jose Ricardo just subscribed. Let's go, Jose. I appreciate you, bro. How much time does it take to learn HTML, CSS? Uh, practice. A lot of practice for CSS, honestly, for CSS and HTML. John Pascal, thank you for subscribing. If you guys subscribe, I'm always going to give you a shout out. If you subscribe, if you donate, you're always going to get a shout out. Just continue the CSS, man. I'm sorry. I know. I titled it one thing and then I switched up my mind, decided to end up doing something else. Awesome. Thank you guys for jumping on. Appreciate you. That was a lot of fun. We'll do more things like that. I want to just have a lot more uh, sit downs with you guys like this where we code up something or we learn something. 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's it for me. I love your beautiful face. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.